Mean. I never thought I would be talking about this on the internet, but here we are. All right, hello, 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 friends. Today we're going to do a Q&A and we are going to try to get as many questions answered as possible in the realm of questions that I've never answered before or questions that I felt needed a little bit more of an explanation or questions that I wasn't yet ready to answer for whatever amount of reasons. So my baby is sleeping right next to me because who wouldn't be more comfortable sleeping in their parents' bed? That is my baby, he is right there. So let's just dive right into the video so that we can maximize the amount of time answering these questions. I would love to hear your feedback, leave your comments down below, whatever you have to add, your personal experiences. Don't forget to like the video because as I mentioned in my previous video, I am waiting till the most current video I have up reaches 300 likes before I start preparing another one. The first thing I wanna address is perhaps the rumor or a couple people have answered here or there in more polite ways, but alternatively, there was a hit piece written about me. Don't go search it because we don't wanna put traffic going towards said hit piece. Concerning if my husband forced me to stay home and I do find that in the traditional space, a lot of people really want to paint husbands as this evil dictator kind of personality where they're like forcing women to stay home and oppressing them. But this couldn't be further from the truth for a majority of women I know in this space and their husbands. I don't show my husband a lot on the internet, so that's why I think that certain people feel as though the only way a woman could want to stay home is because she does have an oppressive husband. But if you were to meet him in real life, you would find that he is one of the funniest people you've ever met, one of the most accepting people. And he truly has never forced me into anything. When I talk about finding a masculine husband and a man who's kind of doing his own thing, on this channel, I think of my husband for the reason that he is so confident in what he is doing in life that he just wants to support me in whatever I want to do in my life. But you can tell that they were just searching for like one-liners of things that could be construed a certain way so that they could depict my husband a certain way as well as me being like submissive in a negative way. And I think that one of the things that I had said in the past was that a more traditional marriage makes my marriage better. But it's important to understand, and I honestly feel as though this rings true for many of you in the audience, that a traditional marriage doesn't make things work better because you were forced into that position. It is because you are happiest in that position. I am happiest as a homemaker. My husband always asks me, what do you want to do and let's make it work. And currently in my life, I cannot picture myself anywhere else than home with my baby. This is truly where I want to be. And yes, it is reflective of a more traditional marriage and it makes my marriage better because I am the happiest that I have ever been been. So to reiterate, I find it truly disheartening when people come on the internet and they critique the spouses because the spouses aren't putting themselves out there. I do try to respect my husband's privacy and that's a big reason why you also don't see my child on the internet. Not because I think that parents who show their child on the internet, other women in this space who show their children are doing anything wrong. That's not what I think at all. It is just because of the experiences that I've had and the decision that I have personally made on the extent of what I feel comfortable showing. Regardless of what you say, regardless of what you do, people are going to take pieces of information and use it to paint a picture of who they think you are, or who they think your family is. But I had gained thousands of subscribers after criticism came out about me. And then in a sense, it's kind of positive because all these people talking negatively about us in this space does end up helping women find us and feel less alone. So there's that. The next thing I wanna talk about is why I got a c-section. I talked a little bit about it, about my birth story very briefly in the first vlog that I did after I had my son, but I was in a little bit of a new motherhood phase and I did not go in depth into this topic. So there are many reasons that I could list out to you, but this would probably be a two hour video. The reason I'm presenting this to you now is because I was asked for more details, but also because I think it's important for women to see a variety of different births, of positive C-section experiences, etc. So technically, my C-section was a planned C-section, 
it, but it was something that I was unsure of and I had been talking back and forth with my doctor for several weeks because there wasn't just like one surefire reason why it was absolutely necessary. It wasn't technically absolutely necessary, but knowing what we know now, especially the size of my baby and the position of how he was sitting in my pelvis, probably would have ended up in a C-section. Talking about my pelvis, I had a um, symphysis pubic dysfunction, I believe that's what it's called. Pretty bad after 36 weeks. And it's kind of ironic because this whole pregnancy that I had, I was talking about how easy it was for me. I barely had any warning sickness. It was mostly anxiety that I dealt with, which wasn't something directly attributed to pregnancy. But after 36 weeks, it was a little bit difficult for me to move around because my baby was very large, <laughs> which he was almost nine pounds at 38 weeks. So a big baby and he continued to be a big baby even though he was not predicted to be a big baby but I had that feeling anyway I had a big concern that the active labor would be very painful for me because my pelvis just felt like it was being split in half that was one reason that was of concern another reason is that I have very thin skin I know this because I've had surgery in the past where they have had to use fascia in order to make sure that my skin you know was properly sewn back together and many people who are part of the SPF 50 club we don't talk a lot about this but you you probably also have very thin skin. Not that it is just exclusive to people who have lighter skin tones, but I'm just talking about on average. So that also put me at a big risk for tearing. There was also the anxiety portion of it. This was more so during one of the waves of big C and being somebody who had anxiety, thankfully during my C-section, I did not have to cover my mouth and my nose. They allowed me to take that off because it was such a short period of time. However, I had heard stories about people having to cover their mouth and their nose during active labor for many hours. Another thing, which is kind of a little bit embarrassing, but I hadn't realized that a lot of people dealt with this as women until I discovered forums where I got to bond with other women over this. I have had a history with a tight pelvic floor. When I was a teenager, this would cause a little bit of leakage because my pelvic floor was so tight. Thankfully, it didn't affect me in terms of intimacy when I got married or anything like that, but I truly felt the effects when I was pregnant just because of the added weight. So I actually used a pelvic wand just to help me relax muscles down there. And so if you're going through a similar thing, that thing really helped me. I never thought I would be talking about this on the internet, but here we are. But like I said, there are many reasons why I was led down that path and I do not regret it at all. It was such a calm experience. It was such a short experience. My husband had a great time. It was very relaxed. I was able to have my doctor perform this. In Canada, you don't always have your doctor at the birth. You have the person on call. I was also able to have the chief anesthetist there, which was a big concern for me because I have had a couple surgeries in the past and the anesthesia part of surgery is what freaks me out rather than being cut open. <laughs> All right, so. Let's talk about feminism. I get asked questions on what's your opinion on modern day feminism? And I don't think I've ever really said the word feminism or what I believe directly about feminism on my TikTok or on my YouTube. People like to infer certain things, but of course it is evident that I don't necessarily align with modern feminism. But friends, I am somebody who has a science degree. I am somebody who was self-employed in the past. I am somebody who has worked multiple jobs. I am even somebody who has has owned property individually as a woman without my husband, without my parents. So of course, I am so happy that I have that opportunity. That being said, there are a lot of things that I do not identify with when it comes to what is being pushed on women in terms of what they should be in modern day culture. I think that even over the past couple of years since I've been on the internet, there is now an illusion of choice. As I used to talk about having the choice to stay home and work, I do believe that we have created a political atmosphere, a social atmosphere where it is unacceptable, but to a certain extent as well, it is unaffordable depending on where you have lived. And we sugarcoat it into saying that they have a choice when we create circumstances and landscapes where that choice is hypocritical and doesn't actually exist. So we have kind of flipped the script from the 1950s woman who stays home, which even at that is kind of a fallacy as well because one of my grandmas owned her own boutique, got her own loan out from the bank in the 1950s and opened her own business without her husband. So next up, I get questions oftentimes about preserving your virginity, being a virgin when you are married? Was I a virgin when I was married? What do I think about virginity, sleeping around, body count? That
that kind of stuff. And I do steer away from that because many women end up influenced by society into sleeping with people that they perhaps didn't want to sleep with just because they find that it is a rite of passage and they don't discover the fact that you can save yourself for a long-term committed relationship, preferably marriage. Do I encourage you to protect your virginity because it is something that is so vulnerable, giving your body to somebody who you don't even know if you're going to get married to? That is a big deal and it's okay to feel as though that is a big deal. You are not less of a woman. I used to get made fun of in university for the thought of like, why didn't I just get it over with because this was something in the way. You don't have to look at it that way and I encourage you not to look at it that way, regardless of what age you are. Bonding intimately with somebody is so special and I'm so happy because there were multiple occasions where I almost got pressured, tricked into losing my virginity to somebody that I wasn't sure I was going to marry. And I do want to tell you that if you are a woman who has slept with multiple people and you do regret it now, there's no point in living in the past. What I encourage you to do is to own that you have changed your mind. I talked about this so many times on my channel. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay to want a different life. It doesn't matter what age you are. Start now. Yes, there are advantages to not having slept with many people. I'm not just talking about how other people view you. I'm talking about your own personal psychological state, but you can do the work to remedy that. You don't have to feel as though you are stuck in one spot and you are totally doomed. You can start anew. And that's always the message that I've had on this channel. We don't look down on other people in this space. We empower people who want to live differently than the cultural norm. People have asked me if I have had Botox or injections, and I'm not going to tell you what you should do. There is a video where I put in my personal opinion, some people didn't like it, but it's just my personal opinion and I will never judge you for what you want to do in terms of physical procedures to your body. But I am a person who is very paranoid about what I put in my body, so I cannot see myself injecting things in my body. The only thing, and I will be completely honest with you on this channel because I do feel as though 2022 is going to be a year of total honesty. The only thing that I can see myself doing after I I am done having kids physically can't have any more children is a breast lift. Do I know if it's going to be needed? That's what I'm going to kind of talk about in my next point. I don't know if that's going to be needed, but that is something I could see myself doing. I did pageants and 75% of women had implants. <laughs> I will be totally honest with you. I found that it was a little bit weird being in an environmentally friendly pageant when I did Miss Earth and most people had implants. It just did not necessarily compute because we we had no makeup rounds that were supposed to be more natural. But anyway, I don't judge people. You want to get implants? You do you, sister. But for me, I also knew many people who had breast implant illness. So on the topic of a breast lift, I would not accompany that with implants and I do not feel personally, for my own convictions, comfortable putting any chemicals in my body. So that also goes along with the fact that many people ask me about my body after birth, body changes, how I feel confident in my body, having gained weight, of course, I gained a lot of weight being pregnant and I wasn't just, you know, eating McDonald's every day. <laughs> It is because I did not have the morning sickness like people did. The only time where I would feel a little bit nauseous is if I didn't eat. Um, my body was busy building a big baby. And of course, you know, you can still build a big baby if you feel nauseous, but it seems as though he was very hungry. He still eats more than average. So that caused for me to gain a lot of weight, even though I was eating very healthy stuff. And it doesn't bother me that much because my spouse thinks that I'm beautiful regardless of what size I am. My husband actually prefers women who are not super, super thin. Um, when I was the ideal body, he dated me when I did pageants. Of course, he never said this, but, but I actually asked him his opinion because he has seen me at different sizes. Anyway, the point is that he does like when I have a little bit of curves. So it's not like I'm in a big rush to lose a lot of weight, but I also do have stretch marks. Um, I have some stretch marks on my chest as well as my belly and my bum. And I don't think that's that big of a deal because when I went through puberty, I'm somebody who had larger hips and I also even had some stretch marks on my chest as well. I have stretch marks all over my body and those faded with time. I think that women are a little bit overly concerned about stretch marks when they will fade with time and yes, you do have a bump in your skin 
But if you want, if you have an event or you're going on a beach vacation and you have stretch marks in places that you're not so comfortable with, I would recommend just getting a spray tan, a professional spray tan. It will make all those stretch marks disappear and you will have a little bit more confidence. I guess I'm rambling on this point because I'm not so concerned with my body having changed. I have spent a lot of time focused on health over these past couple years to conceive my son. What I would like is to have my period back so that I could start trying to have a more consistent cycle and then I could try for another kid. But it seems as though with breastfeeding, I'm just one of those women that even though I have weaned a little bit because I had an oversupply and I started introducing food to my baby, that I'm still a person who doesn't have their period. and. I never thought I would be a woman who would want their period back, but here I am. And that is actually my biggest concern right now rather than what I look like. So I do get questions about the dark side of the trad movement. And I have things that I do want to say again in an upcoming video, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, where I'm going to address more of this topic. But what I find unfair is that people come on the internet and they see random like Twitter profiles or certain Instagram pages with people who don't even present their actual face. And we don't even know if they're trolling or they have kinks about the traditional wife movement. And then other people who are just looking for things to grab onto see that and they criticize us all entirely. Or they take certain pieces of information and videos like they've done to me. And then they say, see, see, she said this here without taking into context the entire video. I find it kind of sad that many people are steering away from using the term traditional wife because the media has uh, has slandered the trad wife movement. And I've talked about this before in a video where I talked about why I choose to use the term housewife because I do find that when people and influences want to break apart a movement, they do so by actually taking terminology and trashing it. So although you might prefer to call yourself a homemaker and not to call yourself a traditional wife or instead to call yourself a biblical wife or a Christian wife, that is totally fine and I 100% respect that. But what I do find kind of sad is that some people aren't using that term now because of how badly it's been trashed. So it is kind of breaking apart the movement. But I think that we have done so much good work on the internet. I receive messages all the time about how my content has helped people feel more confident, has helped people live out the life they truly want. And so I personally am not afraid to call myself a traditional wife. And look, I have nothing to hide. I am not a hateful person. You can come on my channel channel and call yourself a traditional wife with whatever background you have. I find that these spaces online are actually some of the least hateful spaces online despite what certain people have to say. You don't have to be all in and look like the certain stereotype of a traditional wife. You don't have to look like me. You don't have to live your life like me. You can just take certain values like having a home-centered life and call yourself a traditional wife in that sense. My mother worked as a teacher for a majority of her life but she would call herself a traditional wife because her children, her family, her home are what took precedence. All right, and lastly, my baby is waking up. So this is probably a good time to answer the final question. I get asked a lot about intimacy tips, physical intimacy tips with your husband. I don't exactly know how to approach this question because it's more like a general theme of people asking me. I don't exactly know what they want to know. That would probably be a good video to do like a small short video on how you can cultivate intimacy with your spouse to revitalize the playlist that I'm trying to revitalize on relationships and men. Understand that being in a marriage gives you so much freedom to express yourself intimately and to get to know your own desires. This is another reason why I think it is so important to actually try to save that special part of yourself for the person that you have committed to for life. Although you want to live an elegant life and you want to be a Christian woman, there's so much freedom to find out what you like in your marriage with a person whom you don't have to feel shy around. You don't have to have a boring intimate life even though you are a traditional wife. Okay friends, baby is awake. This was the perfect timing. Let's do this again with the next video. Having my baby sleep in this bed seems to be the magic key. Unfortunately, I didn't drink my coffee, but I'm going to do that now. Mama is going to get you. Mama is going to get you. All right, leave your comments down below. Like this video if you wanna see me do more raw, honest Q&A type style videos in the future. Many of you are very polite with asking your questions, but I know you wanna dig a little bit deeper and I am always thinking of those questions, writing them down 
to someday get the courage to answer them. So I'm all ears here. We will not advance in our movement without being honest with each other. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.